the Harola is adapted to arid environments with annual rainfall averaging 300 to 600 mm. Their habitats range from open grassland with light bush to wooded savannas with low shrubs and scattered trees, most often on sandy soils. Despite the arid environments they inhabit Harola appear to be able to survive independently of surface water. The reasons for the historic decline of the Harola are not known but is likely a combination of factors including disease, hunting, severe drought, predation, competition for food and water from domestic livestock and habitat loss caused by bush encroachment as a result of the extirpation of elephants within its range. The loss of the Harola would be the first extinction of a mammalian genus on mainland Africa in modern human history. The Lake Chala tilapia is a species of cichlid fish that is endemic to Lake Chala, a small crater lake on the border of Kenya and Tanzania. It mostly lives in relatively deep water. It is considered critically endangered with the primary threats being deterioration of its habitat due to siltation, and other non-native tilapia species that have been introduced to Lake Chala. Before these introductions, the Lake Chala tilapia was the only fish in Lake Chala. Eupropacris abbreviata is a species of grasshopper of the family Acrididae. The species is endemic to Kilosa, Tanzania, and is critically endangered due to deforestation. Due to the introduced predatory fishes, Chala tilapia has become very rare, with the main population in Lake Victoria itself having declined by more than 80% in the last 20 years. The remaining populations are also under heavy fishing pressure. The Uluguru bushstrike is a species of rare bird occurring only in the Uluguru Mountains in Tanzania. It was discovered in 1926 and was known to be confined to a single site in the Uluguru North Forest Reserve of about 84 square kilometers. However, in March 2007, a team of Wildlife Conservation Society of Tanzania discovered its presence in the Uluguru South Forest Reserve in Morogoro region. The diet of the Rondo Dwarf Galago consists primarily of insects. The species also feeds on fruits and flowers. By clinging to forest life and leaping, the species can feed in the leaf litter and the understory. As nocturnal animals, they build daytime sleeping nests in the canopy. It is assumed that the Rondo Dwarf Galago gives birth to one or two young per year. It lives in an area reported in 2012 to be less than 100 square kilometers and is threatened by habitat loss due to logging. The Rondo Dwarf Galago is typically found in coastal dry forest and scrub in forest patches that are on eastern facing slopes and escarpments. The Kapunji has a unique call, described as a honk bark, which distinguishes it from its close relatives. The Kapunji has a unique call, described as a honk bark, which distinguishes it from its close relatives. Several factors contribute to the projected decline of the species, including predation, habitat destruction, and hunting. The Kapunji has only two known predators, crowned eagles and leopards. The biggest threats to the species come from human activities. Logging for timber and charcoal production are the most prominent threats, but locals are also known to hunt the Kapunji due to its crop-destroying habits or simply as a food source. The population size of the white-backed vulture has been decreasing significantly within the past few decades. In 1922, the population was estimated at 270,000. Over the past two decades, its population has noticeably decreased. While not much is known about the current population, a recent study found that white-backed vultures have a high survival rate. Individual adults have the highest survival rate, while two-year-old birds have the lowest survival rate. Across all ages, the survival rate is estimated to be 90.7%. This means that the deaths of adult vultures will lead to rapid population declines. The loss of adults will cause less reproduction and with younger birds less likely to survive, the population will drop drastically. 
A major cause of population decrease is the loss of habitat. Vultures are also being poisoned by humans, although not intentionally. In order to kill hyenas, lions, and other predators, herders add poisons into their livestock. Vultures ingest the poison upon eating a deceased animal's carcass. This poisoning generally occurs outside of protected areas but is a leading factor in the population's decline. Habitats are also being disturbed by human land management and direct nesting persecution patterns. The African wild dog is a highly social animal, living in packs with separate dominance hierarchies for males and females. Uniquely among social carnivores, the females rather than the males disperse from the natal pack once sexually mature. The young are allowed to feed first on carcasses. The species is a specialized diurnal hunter of antelopes, which it catches by chasing them to exhaustion. Like other canids, the African wild dog regurgitates food for its young, but this action is also extended to adults. To the point of being central to their social life. Its natural enemies are lions and hyenas. The former will kill the canids where possible whilst hyenas are frequent kleptoparasites. The African wild dog is primarily threatened by habitat fragmentation, which results in human-wildlife conflict, transmission of infectious diseases and high mortality rates. Surveys in the Central African Republic's Chinko area revealed that the African wild dog population decreased from 160 individuals in 2012 to 26 individuals in 2017. At the same time, transhuman pastoralists from the border area with Sudan moved in the area with their livestock. Rangers confiscated large amounts of poison and found multiple lion cadavers in the camps of livestock herders. They were accompanied by armed merchants who also engage in poaching large herbivores, sale of bushmeat and trading lion skins. The south-central black rhino population was at 9,090 in 1980 but due to a wave of illegal poaching for its horn their numbers decreased to 1,300 in 1995. In 2001 the population stood at 1,651. This has raised to about 2,200 in 2010. Over the last 50 years they have experienced a 90% decline in numbers. At present the number is overall increasing, though decreasing regionally. Threats toward the subspecies is mainly illegal poaching. The amount of poaching has increased in recent years. Amatola toad natural habitats are high-altitude moist grasslands. Reproduction takes place in shallow temporary pools and seepages, including pools formed in vehicle tracks. The species is known to congregate in large numbers to breed. However, it was not observed in 1998-2009 despite numerous searches, and the species was feared to be extinct. In 2011, an adult female and many tadpoles were again discovered, on a site that had been searched before. Detection seems to require suitable weather, heavy rains that trigger breeding. The main threats to Amatola toad are loss of grassland through afforestation, overgrazing, and fires. Forestry vehicle use during the breeding season can be detrimental to the tadpoles and breeding adults. Indiscriminate collecting and habitat destruction, especially from fires as the beetles are flightless, are so threatening to the Colophon primo C, it has been placed under the protection of nature conservation laws in South Africa, with the insect being particularly endangered. Being flightless makes recolonization of burnt areas more difficult for these beetles. Duplessis agile katydid is a species of katydid in the subfamily Phanerotarini. It is endemic to Cedarberg Mountains in South Africa. The Rose's ghost frog is a species of frog in the family Heliophrenidae endemic to South Africa. It is a medium-sized species with purple or brown blotches on a pale green background and large discs on its fingers and toes. It has a very restricted range, being only known from the slopes of parts of Table Mountain. The tadpoles live in permanent streams but these are in danger of drying up because of the establishment of pine plantations. Because of its small range and changes in its habitat, this frog is listed as critically endangered.
De Winton's golden mole is known from a single location and has not been seen for 50 years. It occupies the same range as Grant's golden mole and the two may have been confused. However, phylogenetic evidence indicates that they are different species, based on differences in the skull, the shape of the malleus and the number of vertebrae. The type location is Port Nolok, and this mole's habitat is coastal sand dunes and nearby sandy areas. Mining for diamonds near Port Nolof may be a threat to this species. The International Union for Conservation of Nature now rates this species as critically endangered and it may be extinct. Like all antelopes, giant sables are shy by nature, but they can also be very aggressive. The males can be especially dangerous when hurt, attacked, or approached. In fights, males avoid some serious injuries by kneeling down on their front legs, and engage in horn wrestling fights. Fatalities from these fights are rare. It lives in forests near water, where leaves and tree sprouts are always juicy and abundant. It is a critically endangered subspecies, it is protected in natural parks and hunting it is forbidden. It is the national symbol of Angola, and is held in a great regard by its people. This was perhaps one of the reasons the animal survived the long civil war. In African mythology, just like other antelopes, they symbolize vivacity, velocity, beauty and visual sharpness. High canopy forests in Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire serve as the exclusive habitat of Miss Waldron's red colobus. The monkey was frequently poached for bushmeat, with little interference by local governments. Habitat destruction also played a role in its decline. Miss. Penance red colobus monkeys have been little studied but their diet is likely to be similar to that of other red colobus monkeys and consist mainly of fresh leaves supplemented by flowers, fruit and seeds. It has declined dramatically in numbers and is also listed as critically endangered. After not having been seen since the 1970s, it was considered possibly extinct until spotted and photographed in 2015 in the Republic of the Congo. But the species is likely on the brink of extinction. Western lowland gorillas primarily live in rainforest, swamp forest, brush, secondary vegetation, clearing and forest edges, abandoned farming fields and riverine forest. They live in primary and secondary lowland tropical forest at elevations that extend from sea level up to 1,300 meters. Their intelligence is displayed through their ability to fashion natural materials into tools that help them gather food more conveniently. While the use and manufacture of tools to extract ants and termites is a well-documented behavior in wild chimpanzees, it has never been observed in other great apes in their natural habitat and never seen to be done by other primates in captivity. In tropical forest, gorillas are hunted to provide meat for the bushmeat trade. Logging also destroys gorilla habitats. Although logging diminishes gorilla habitats, it may also provide for increased herbaceous vegetation as a result of gaps in the tree cover. Destruction of gorilla habitat may harm the overall forest ecosystem. Western lowland gorillas are seed dispersers, which is beneficial to many of the animals in the forest, so their extinction could impact many other animals, which could over time destroy their current ecosystem. The western lowland gorilla population in the wild is faced by a number of factors that threaten its extinction. Such factors include deforestation, farming, grazing and the expanding human settlements that cause forest loss. There is a correlation between human intervention in the wild with the destruction of habitats and increase in bushmeat hunting. Cross-river gorillas have certain nesting behaviors that depend on things such as their current habitat, climate, food source availability and risk of attack or vulnerability. Populations reside in areas of undisturbed dense forest which is scarce due to human occupation or use for natural resources. The Takamanda National Park and the Kagwain Gorilla Sanctuary are where most of the surviving members reside. Nest distribution was clearly influenced by anthropogenic factors within the sanctuary, with the disturbed southern section of the park avoided. 
Even though current wildlife laws regarding the areas are in place cross-river gorillas will not nest in areas near humans. The increased population of human inhabitants and the expansion of grasslands has caused a fragmentation of the species into many subpopulations. Many factors contributed to the fragmentation of the population, including the expansion of farmland, human occupation, lack of accessible habitat and the sparsity of suitable or favorable habitat. Due to this isolation, gene flow has begun to slow and subpopulations are suffering from a lack of gene diversity which could mean a long-term issue. Eastern gorillas are herbivorous, with a heavily foliage-based diet, due to lack of available fruit in their habitats. They have smaller home ranges than western gorillas as foliage is more abundant than fruit. They are diurnal but the majority of fur aging occurs in the morning and late afternoon. At night, they build nests by folding over vegetation, usually on the ground. The eastern gorilla has become increasingly endangered since the 1990s, and the species was listed as critically endangered in September 2016 as its population continued to decrease. Primary threats to the eastern gorilla include habitat destruction for residential, commercial, and agricultural purposes, habitat fragmentation caused by transportation corridors and resource extraction, as well as disease. Between 1996 and 2016, the eastern gorilla lost more than 70% of its population, and by 2016 the total population was estimated to be less than 6,000. Western chimpanzees have unique behaviors never observed in any of the other subspecies of the chimpanzee. They make wooden spears to hunt other primates, use caves as homes, share plant foods with each other, and travel and forage during the night. They also submerge themselves in water and play in it to stay cool in the oppressive heat. Female West African chimpanzees have been observed hunting and play an equally important role in defending territorial ranges from intrusion from neighboring communities as the males do, suggesting females enjoy a much higher position in the hierarchy and play a more important role in social dynamics than other chimpanzee. Subspecies. They are the most genetically differentiated and homozygous subspecies of the common chimpanzee. There are an estimated 5,500 individuals in the wild. The primary threat to the western chimpanzee is habitat loss, although it is also killed for bushmeat. The bonobo is distinguished by relatively long legs, pink lips, dark face, tail tough through adulthood, and parted long hair on its head. The species is omnivorous and inhabits primary and secondary forests, including seasonally inundated swamp forests. Because of political instability in the region and the timidity of bonobos, there has been relatively little fieldwork done observing the species in its natural habitat. Along with the common chimpanzee, the bonobo is the closest extant relative to humans. As the two species are not proficient swimmers, the formation of the Congo River 1.5 million years ago possibly led to the speciation of the bonobo. Bonobos live south of the river, and thereby were separated from the ancestors of the common chimpanzee, which live north of the river. There are no concrete data on population numbers, but the estimate is between 50,000 individuals. The species is listed as endangered and is threatened by habitat destruction and human population growth and movement, though commercial poaching is the most prominent threat. Bonobos typically live 40 years in captivity. Their lifespan in the wild is unknown, but it is almost certainly much shorter. The Upemba lechwe is a species of antelope found only in the Upemba wetlands in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Lechwe are found in marshy areas where they eat aquatic plants. They use the knee-deep water as protection from predators. Their legs are covered in a water-repellent substance which allows them to run quite fast in knee-deep water. Lechwe are diurnal. They gather in herds which can include many thousands of individuals. Herds are usually all of one sex, but during mating season they mix.